In May 2018, the Not Too Young to Run bill was signed by President Muhammadu Buhari. It was believed that it would pave the way for Nigerian youth to foray into politics and make their impact on the country. However, the results of the 2019 election show that even if there, is, there was a positive trend in youth participation, with youth candidacy increasing to from 21% in 2015 to 34.2% in the 2019 elections, the number of youths aged 18 to, 20 to 29 voted into elective positions in Nigeria is less than 1%. How heartbreaking. Now, further, there is no use in the new cabinet formed by President Buhari, and neither is there a use in the National Assembly. Looking upon these results and others that have come up since then, can we say... Nigerian youth are simply not ready for leadership. And if so, how can we help them in their preparations? Joining us to discuss this is Abiola Oloroni Shola. He is the 50th president of the JCI Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Let's start by talking about JCI because we hear about these, um, you know, from young people in universities most times. And I have often wondered what the JCI does. Yes, it's a non-governmental organization, but I'm made to understand that you give to society yeah. and really nothing in return, but you're trying to be nation builders. Um, so how many young people, what's the percentage of young people that the JCI has been able to um, recruit in the Nigerian space? Okay, so uh, firstly, um, JCI uh, actually, um, equip uh, young people, young persons that wish uh, to be a leader uh, with the necessary tools and resources that um, will help you to um, solve some challenges within your locality and at the same time benefit the society. You lead the world. And looking at the uh, membership strength, we have over 5,000 active members and we have over 7,000 alumni. So we have uh, our organization exists in uh, colleges and it also exists among the working class uh, members. Hmm, interesting. Now, talking about, you know, active um, citizenship and us young people being more interested in leading, what role has JCI played in that? And let's not even go into the politics part of it. Let's leave politics out of it. Let's talk about leadership, being ready for leadership, knowing that you need to step up to the plate. Okay, so um, in our own organization, we train members to be a leader. And by the virtue of that, you would have been given the opportunity to lead at a particular time, at one time or the other. Maybe you probably rose from a, um, a, a project chair, you'll be appointed as a board of director. you also be given the responsibility to lead as a local organization president. As at that time, you execute the leadership trait you've learned in the organization. So we can boldly say that we have, we have, um, a, a, a mem we have a leaders in our organization. We have young ones that can be uh, trusted with task and they will execute it without um, putting their whole self-interest ahead. Um, I remember sometime in 2014, if not 2015, if I'm not mistaken, um, um, former President Lucia Gwabasanjo was talking about young people not being ready to take on the reins of power from what he saw from his prism. But you've been working with young people. You're a young person. You're the 50th president. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, how ready are we for whatever that is ahead of us? Nigeria, of course, is burdened on every side with all kinds of problems as we speak. And every time we hear them say, oh, it's time for the young people, it's time for the young people, where are the young people? Okay, so with that we also uh, we can look at that in the, uh, when you look at the history. When uh, President Lucia Gopasajor was a, a military president, how old was he then? Um, President Buhari was also a one-time uh, head of state, and how old were they during those periods? They were at their early 30s. So why can we then say now that the young ones are not actually ready to lead? We have among us that are very, they are young, but um, when it comes to them executing leadership uh, quality, them leading certain group of numbers, if we entrust them with uh, some responsibility, you can rest assured that you can go back and sleep, they will do it um, as it is expected, and it's going to be benefit to this nation, benefit to the society, and everybody will be glad. Um, I, I see a lot of Nigerian young people, you know, um, succeeding in entrepreneurship in the tech industry. We see a lot of them, I mean, um, outside the country, you know, even within the country, they, they seem to be holding forth for, mm -hmm. you know, but, but then 
we look at the percentage of the people who are plugged into those areas and are pay setters, it's their tiny percentage. So how, I, how is JCI reaching out, not just to the people that are within you know, the JCI, what are you doing to empower other young people who are not your members? Because you know, we've, I've heard all kinds of things about the generation of, this generation of young mm -hmm. people, us, the millennials, and you know, the distractions that we face, or sometimes um, you know, the brick walls that we get from the people who are older than us and those who have come before us. So how are you actively getting young people to understand that they do have a responsibility, whether it's within the politics or outside of politics? Okay, so, um, for, so in, in our own or national organization, for instance, I will be having an event on Thursday, a digital global economy summit, because uh, COVID-19 brought a lot of opportunities to us. It opened our eyes to mm. a lot of untapped opportunities. So we'll be having close to 1,000 youths seated discussing on digital global economies vis-a-vis -vis the new uh, text in, 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 in our environment, in country, in the whole world at large. So um, we are trying our own best. You know, what I see that our, our input in, in bringing young people to come together and to also join the fold is still an infinite amount of the, the numbers of the youth we have in the country. But because of the fact that we also have the local organization almost in about 30 states in the country, so gradually we'll get across to every member of the youth. But I want to challenge the other youth to also uh, try as much as possible to join the trade, to join the leadership international Nigeria, so that next leadership trades that they need to learn before they actually get the opportunity to probably become a local government chairperson, a member of House of Assembly, they would have probably been under a tutelage of what we call a leadership class. And that can help their performance in the future uh, um, engagement. You're a young person. Let's, let's step away from JCI now. Let's talk about you as a young person and what you see in your daily life. Um, young people in October of 2020, it's mm -hmm. gradually going to become a year now, decided to hit the streets because they were asking for good governance. They were asking that they uh, not be... Um, they not be stereotyped by policemen. They, they were asking for an end to police brutality. And we all know the, you know, the aftermath of that yeah. you know, campaign or that protest. Now, how do you get a young person to even get involved or get interested in turning Nigeria around? Yes, we see a lot of conversations going on on social media. That same social media has been shut down by the government. So again, it does somewhat box the young person in. So as a young person, do you feel that every time you have to come up for air to be able to make anything happen? Or do you even feel like your two cents is important in this country? So uh, I, me as a young person, personally, so I feel uh, every of my minutes matters a lot. And every of that minute can, can also can for the development of the nation. So uh, I don't have to sit at the corner of my room and then feel that government can do it all. So all I need to do as a youth is to say, uh, to be proactive and to be uh, deliberate, to say that what can I do as a youth of this nation to contribute to the development of the country? And um, when we look at the issue of, uh, that you cited, uh, what I feel that uh, actually caused the fallout is because there was no direction. And in any settings, if we, if we are falling in the room and we did not appoint a leader to give us the direction at which we want to channel our request towards, then it could probably end uh, on in a way that we will not actually uh, foresee. So I feel that's the only reason why why I said for us we just feel like okay we need to assign we need to allow somebody to take a lead, and once that person can take us uh, to maybe a nearest destination, somebody else can also be given opportunity to take it up. So in our own organization, it's always one year to lead. You will be allowed to be a president between January 1st and December 31st. So whatever you can do to make your own impact, to make your own contribution to the, uh, the organization, you do it within that one year because all that must also be given opportunity to lead. What do you think about um, young people participating or being involved in partisan politics, not because they want to run for office, but because they want their voices to be heard. So we hear that thing of, oh, politics is a dirty game, you know, um, it's best that you stay away. And, and this is detail for not just young people, but even women. As much as we, we hear every day that women need to be involved, we hardly see these women because society in itself is a barricade. Um, I don't know what the JCI is doing to also educate its members, not just its members, but the people that you're also reaching out to 
to get involved in partisan, partisan politics. So um, usually whenever an election is um, uh, forthcoming, we usually carry out advocacy uh, to sensitize uh, citizens, not only the youth, the, the women, the adults, so that um, we can have a free and fair uh, an election. And uh, there's no way you want to trace uh, the fallout of any election uh, without tracing it back to those politi to our politicians, because they are the ones that engage uh, those youth with the necessary things they actually need, they thought they could use to have that office. But once we can have a leader that, lead that, uh, is, that have this interest of the masses in their heart, and it's not all about um, what you want to gain from that office, if you're leading for the interest of the society, then you don't need a gun to win your election because you want to serve us. Do, so, we, do we have those people in our political class as we speak? Do you think we do have those type of people? You can't take it out of elections. You can't take it out of elections process. You can't take it out of politics. But do you think that we have leaders in our political class now, just wrap your mind around it, that have the mind to lead the heart of the people? I'm talking about the National Assembly, the executive, all of the people that are leading us So today. when you have, um, in a situation whereby you have um, two people, two persons out of 100 that have the interest of the hearts, the interest of the masses in their hearts, do you know that you cannot feel the effect? And that was why I would say it's an infinitesimal of the numbers of the totality of what we have. We have some of them at the House of Assembly that are still leading. They are leading, they are serving their people. They are not uh, keen about the resources they want to get from that office. They are leading to serve people. But they are, it's very minute among the numbers we have, both in the House of Assembly and But um, you see, you see the average young person today is very money conscious. It's all about, for the want of a better word, Blowing, that is the street word. Everybody wants to blow, everybody wants to be successful. Nobody's thinking about the processes that you need to go through. In fact, nobody wants to worry themselves, they just want to get to the top. And that's also a rot, it's a systemic problem. Mm -hmm. um, so how do, you, how do you even convince that person not to get into advanced free fraud, to um, get into smuggling, or want to run to another country to you know, do whatever sharp practices to be able to gain wealth? If the whole society and the system in itself, the country that you call yours, is practically built or set up against you, so um, sometimes we don't we don't have to uh, probably look at what the people you see as your leaders, the people you see as, um, uh, as the people that you see that should have given you direction to take a decision. You have to be yourself. You have to believe. You have to live in a way that you know. Uh, you know you are representing your family, and whatever you do. When it's eat back on you, it's back on your name. I came from a, a, a from, I'm a Yoruba person, and we always believe that our name is important. Somebody will say, don't let your father's name be spot. Do you get so? If you can live uh, with that mentality, then we can then uh, live for the betterment of our country. Because whatever we do, our action or our inaction, we always have effect on where you come from. Mm -hmm. And that's why you say, somebody will say, Nigeria in a particular country uh, did something. And whenever he did something, the, the name of that person will not ring much bell as much as the name of the country, and that affects us as a, as a Nigeria. Final words to the average young person who's watching you? Uh, so uh, we want to charge them to, um, to also be, uh, be uh, they should lead by example, they should try as much as possible to join our own organization so that they can also have opportunity uh, to lead at a particular time, to also learn. Like I said, uh, we, uh, as a JCI, I will not provide platform for them to be a good leader. And we are that organization that uh, develop uh, leaders for changing world. And um, for us to have a better society, it begins with me and you. Mm. All right. Well, Abiola Olorodi Shola is the 50th president of JCI Nigeria, and he's been our guest tonight. Thank you very much for being thank here. Thank you. All right. Well, Take a quick break, but I want to first thank you for being part of the conversation tonight. Uh, let's hear what Nigerians have to say as regards to preparing the young person for leadership. And when we return, I'll be saying my goodbyes. For us to involve youths, I'm telling you, it's not right yet. They're not right for it. The only people that could get involved when you say youths get people who are really interested in the politics. They could be the uh, youth but of middle age, people who are knowledgeable, people who are very, very, uh, they have a wide scope of experience. 
at their places of work, and they could start from their local governments. If there can be an, a, a conducive environment that um, youth can participate without grudges, and if the um, government can create um, a good platform, a platform in the sense that it will not be money driven, people that have vision, that have mission, that are articulate, that have passion for change in this nation, will be who have that zeal to join political parties. Now they are saying it as a as a a joke. A joke in the essence that best brains are not being attracted to politics now. But if there is a conducive environment, if uh, uh, there is no enmity, uh, things are working in order. People more youth will participate in politics. Um, one of the things we can do to improve or to involve youth in this day's politics is one, you know, first thing is to bring down the age barrier which um, youth can, can be eligible to be enlisted for positions. And then two again, the old generations or the old people now should know that they have missed the you know, are missed their home time because this time is actually for the youth. Like uh, people do say during the Obasanjo's era that uh, youth are the future leaders of tomorrow, and uh, because of a lot of things that are going on uh, now, because you, the one you doesn't have money to sponsor the political their political career, and uh, there's uh, something I do advise the, some of the youth. You have to learn. You have to start. You must start from somewhere. Not minding that uh, so our leaders are not. Uh, uh, they are not trying. They, are, they don't want to bring the, the younger ones up. But you have to put your head in. Like uh, I have to give the kudos to the other, some of the state government. Some young ones are now getting themselves involved in the House Assembly uh, post. Uh, advisors, SPA, SPA, this, SPA, that. From there you can raise small funds down to sponsor your political career. And that's it on Plus Politics today. It's just Monday. I will be back tomorrow. I am Mary Anna Cohn, and we'll be having more conversations talking for development. Have a good evening.